Thank you, Elisa. Thank you. Um, sorry, I'm working on sharing my screen. All right, can you see it? Looks yeah, good. we can. Yeah, it looks good. Thank you. <laughs> okay, I'm here to talk about uh, digital technologies for and technologies in general for distributing a world basic income. Um, there are several, right? So the, the, the framing of the idea is suppose we have money for a global basic income. Uh, how do we actually distribute it? Uh, and this is a interesting topic that since, particularly since it's a cross border uh, phenomenon. And there are a few organizations that exist. I don't, uh, I don't know. Um, there's the World Basic Income, the UK, there's um, Hedge for Humanity that's focused more on decentralized solutions. And there, these organizations are advocating specifically for a global basic income for everyone in the world. Um, that may or may not include governments. So here we go. Um, there are two major problems when you're trying to think about how you might do this. There's the registration problem and the distribution problem. I will try and discuss each of these. Um, it, pardon me if I skip through some of these slides. <laughs> um, so the registration problem has to do with identity. How do you sign users up and you make sure that each person gets one account and only one account. Um, there is, uh, so a, a state distributed basic income might work better in some countries than others. And this is a problem if you want it to be equal all over the world in all different countries. Um, this has to do with uh, different types of resident records, uh, potential for political persecution of some groups or individuals who may or may not get the basic income um, and then cost and logistics problems that some countries may, uh, particularly poorer countries might have problems with more than uh, wealthier countries. Um, you might say that there are other groups, independent groups or nonprofits that might be trustworthy distributors, but this could still be difficult if they don't have uh, adequate population records, um, which states arguably are more, more well equipped to provide. Um, this leads me to the idea of a non-state or decentralized identity system. Um, but something like this must be both civil resistant and privacy preserving. And that is a hard problem to solve. Uh, civil resistant, by the way, just means it, there's, there's only one account per person, essentially. You don't get someone signing up multiple times in order to overwhelm the system. Um, so I'm going to just skip through these, but these are all different types of um, registration solutions, uh, and some of them have active projects that would be, uh, you know, very interesting to discuss further. Um, first, we have the web of trust concept, which is just like a network of people who are vouching for each other. Um, there is a concept of a social graph analysis, which is like a web of trust. Um, it's um, more, uh, there's some more analysis that goes into this. Um, in particular, uh, what's interesting to me is the use of credit networks. Um, uh, for example, like the Trustlines network, you could use uh, people issuing uh, a credit to each other and, and an analysis of credit worthiness of individuals to approximate um, who's real and who's part of which identity system or, or which region, et cetera. Um, you could design a, an AI hard Turing test. So uh, uh, basically a test that only humans can pass. Um, and this is a type of identity system that is arguably very secure, but on the other hand, it might not be as inclusive as other systems could be since, um, for example, in uh, IDENA, you'd have people solving basically um, something like a CAPTCHA and if you, if you have everyone trying to do this all at the same time, you're probably never gonna get the whole world to participate in such a system. 
So it's not entirely inclusive. Um, there are other systems uh, that are more designed around um, having people either vote on other people or predict whether people are real, et cetera, or using some type of a court system to admit new members. You can also have a system that uses an analysis of biometrics, um, meaning you take some uh, signature of a, a person's physical body and you use that, and you make a, a, a digital version of that and you use that as a, their identifier. Um, there has been a lot of criticism of using this type of uh, an approach um, because uh, biometrics, you know, once, once you give up your fingerprint or once you give up your iris scan, um, if that information is not handled in a privacy conscious way, then it could, um, it could come back to haunt you and nobody quite knows yet what the, what the risks are in that kind of a situation. Um, there's a concept called a pseudonym party in which uh, people gather together in a physical or in a virtual place at all at the same time. And um, this is very interesting since you get people physically together, it's, it's really hard to fake that and abuse that system. But again, it might not be the most inclusive type of a system because our goal is to distribute a inclusive worldwide basic income and not everyone can participate in those. Um, you could use that type of a system as a seeding protocol uh, integrated with another um, approach. Um, and that might be a way to hack a more inclusive identity system. Um, you could also, this one's kind of my <laughs> favorite, uh, the, the guerrilla use of government documents. You could take something like, um, Ubik uses passports. You could take a passport and um, basically turn that into a digital identifier. And um, for as, you know, until people realize that you're using it as a one per person identity system, it might be able to approximate the, um, the, the civil resistant requirements of your, of your system. Um, so uh, that was just a brief introduction to different uh, decentralized identity systems for distribution. So now we should talk about the distribution problem. Um, how do you actually get um, value to people? Um, and this, this, so uh, this is a much harder problem when you're not working with, um, yeah, with governments. Um, just as a general overview, some people still prefer cash, uh, which is easier and familiar, and you know. You won't get, you, you know, if you take your phone out to pay, you could get your phone stolen. So some people still prefer cash for that reason. However, um, we should probably focus on digital and electronic distribution. This is faster. This is cheap. Um, it can be traceable. It's usually more secure. Um, mobile phone penetration is pretty high and it's probably only going to get higher. Um, and if you look at it from the outside as an independent um, uh, organization, phones are much cheaper than creating or distributing something like a, a money card um, because you don't have to do anything. People already have all the tools available to them. Um, so again, digital distribution probably uh, through phones is probably the future. Um, however, major accessibility issues remain and a very big one is internet access. Um, so there are, uh, probably a lot of you are thinking right now of cryptocurrencies, central bank, digital currencies, mobile money, um, versus more traditional bank money, um, or more untraditional <laughs> local currencies. Um, but in all cases, our goal should be for minimal fees. And when we look at different types of distribution systems like these, um, the, the, important thing to keep in mind is what is the governance of the system? So who do we, who should be controlling the payment platform itself? Um, and in particular, how much privacy should users have? Um, okay, so credit networks and also local currencies are one type of a uh, distribution mechanism. You could say, so it, it is possible to use a decentralized 
credit network or a mutual credit network as a distribution system, I think I mentioned this earlier, um, this would be like if you were to go to your neighbor and say, I trust you for some amount of money, but you don't have to have that money. You can just give them an IOU or a promise um, or a type of credit. This is a totally decentralized, um, natural, organic form of payment. Um, and uh, the, the, yeah, the concept of mutual credit is an old one. I won't go too into it. But the idea in brief is that you could use a system like that that is already decentralized um, at, to approximate a basic income or the effect of a basic income, um, either as it, as it is or by backing or collateralizing that credit at a later point. Um, so this would not be actually distributing uh, money, but it would be um, sort of collateralizing bottom up money. Um, and you could look at other types of local currencies too, collateralizing those as a, as a way to approximate a, yeah, a, a, a far reaching basic income system. Um, we can talk briefly about cryptocurrencies and so-called stable coins. Um, the advantage of using a cryptocurrency is that it is censorship resistant. So if you are attempting to use a, uh, a distribution mechanism that you don't want to be subject to um, being, you know, to any sort of interference with um, any sort of adversaries, so hackers or whatever, but also, also nation states that may not want you for whatever reason to be uh, participating or in their economy. Um, then you would use a cryptocurrency. Um, there are different types of cryptocurrencies that may be better or worse, uh, depending on your goals. And in particular, if you're looking for a stable unit of value, you should probably use one that is designed for that purpose. Um, and I'm going to skip to the next slide. Um, in particular, privacy preserving cryptocurrencies are kind of a hot topic. That's kind of the ideal. Um, you, it, it, cryptocurrencies in particular have um, a lot of your transactions are easy to de-anonymize. And so if you want to protect people in the future from that kind of a threat, if you think that's important, then you need to, um, you need to get a, yeah, you need to focus on a privacy preserving system. Um, this is uh, just a last discussion about mesh networking. So one of the major issues for actually getting money into digital money into the hands of people is internet access. Um, a lot of cryptocurrencies may, you know, people may want to use them, but it's just not practical because the internet goes out so often. And um, yeah, and that goes for any sort of digital currencies too, or you may not have cell service and then you can't use your mobile money. Um, one potential way to begin uh, thinking about sol solving this is to focus on mesh networking devices um, and just to build up a better internet system that's more makes, you know, makes connectivity accessible for everybody. So uh, thank you very much. Um, my name is Eliza. You can reach out to me um, by email or on Twitter. And I'm very happy to have gotten the opportunity to talk to you today. Thanks so much, Eliza. Um, so I'll ask Hao Chan just to, if you can, put your slides up, so we'll hear from you next. I particularly like the idea of, uh, um, what was the, the kind of party you talked about there? I thought it was, the phrase sort of took me off guard, Elisa. A pseudonym party. A yeah. pseudonym party, yeah. I think I, I'm sure I've not been to any of those before, but interesting <laughs> idea nonetheless. Okay, um, that's perfect, Hai Chan. We can see those, so I'll pass on to you. Thank you. We don't hear you yet. Ah, I'm, I'm mute. I was muted. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you now. 
Thank you. Okay, Hachan. great. Yeah, so thank you so much for at least that great summary. Uh, and thank you so much for mentioning the personal hood. Actually, this idea was uh, created by my supervisor, Professor Brian Turt, two years ago initially. And actually, we are working on that, and I will mention uh, this in my talk. And also, uh, uh, I will talk about how uh, our cryptocurrency can uh, distribute it uh, to everyone as uh, uh, based on the foundation of proof of personal hood. So I'm Hao Qian. Uh, so my, uh, today my topic is towards eco opportunity cryptocurrencies. Uh, this is a joint work with Christina and uh, Professor Brian Ford. We are all from a uh, computer science department at the EPSL in Lausanne. Uh, in 2016, in Switzerland, there was a referendum aiming to uh, give every Swiss citizen a uh, basic income each month. However, uh, this uh, proposal was reje uh, rejected. One of the reasons why it was rejected is that uh, it will cost Swiss government a lot of money. Indeed, the majority of universal basic income proposals relies on government money, uh, mainly from uh, taxes. One layer below the government is the existing banking system, which creates the money in the first place. However, this structure greatly limits the possibility of implementing the basic income due to the limited government money, for example. Uh, can we do better? We have a, a more solid ground that is our infinite design space. We might be able to build a stronger universal basic income without the help of the government and uh, dependence on the existing banking system. And this is the main uh, goal of today's presentation. Here is a roadmap of today's talk. First, I will briefly uh, talk about how money is created in our modern banking system, which will help you to compare it with our uh, proposal later. Second, I will step-by-step step derive the monetary policy of PopCoin, starting from a naive German. Finally, uh, I will introduce an uh, innova innovative method to do the census without government, which uh, can be served as a foundation layer for implementing PopCoin anonymously. So uh, how many is created? Uh, the simplest form includes Bob here, who is a happy man because he can use his credit card to buy a coffee every day. Also, he can apply mortgage for his future house from his commercial bank. In both cases, the money is created by the commercial bank from the thin air. A similar thing can happen one layer above. The commercial bank can also get credit from the central bank, and the money is created by the central bank from the thin air again. To summarize the process, first, the money we have is really debt based money. We even cannot create money without creating the debt first in our murder, in our current banking system. Second, it is a non equal opportunity money. Bob, in our example, is lucky because he has a credit card and then he can apply for a mortgage. But not everyone is as lucky as Bob. Finally, this is a non-democratic money since we are missing the democratic consensus of adopting this banking system in the first place. And this partially because we do not have uh, any other choice. So back to our main goal. We want to build a solid UBI without central role of government in controlling and redistributing the money and uh, without relying on the existing banking system. Let us uh, first try a drama. We simply regularly distribute crypto basic income to everyone created by, by a blockchain from the thing air. So after the first month on average, everyone would have one portion of basic income. And after two months on average, everyone would have a two percent of basic income. 
And of course, after five months, everyone will have 5% of basic income on average. We can use the equation of change to analyze this monetary policy. M here is the money supply. That means how much uh, popcorn exists in the world. The V here is the velocity of money, which is the average frequency with which a unit of money is spent. P here is the price level, and the Q is an index of real expenditure. Assuming the velocity of money and the real expenditure are more or less stable, this equation tells us that with the linear increase in money supply, the price level will also increase linearly. So we will have a, a inflation situation. To summarize, the simple, this simple monetary policy provides equal opportunity for the same generation because they will always receive the same amount of basic income. We call this property equal opportunity in space. However, the future generation may receive less in real value due to the inflation effect. Therefore, it does not provide the equal opportunity income, as we call it. How can we improve it? We can apply demerage or negative interest rate to control the supply of money. Therefore, indirectly controlling the price level. The picture shows how demerage can be implemented with paper currency in order to validate the note. Each month, the holder of this note has to put a stamp on it. As you can see on the right, which costs 1% of the value of the note itself. Therefore, it implements a 1% negative rate interest rate per month. In the era of digital currency, the computer program can simply uh, charge the demerit free automatically. Now uh, let's apply a uh, demerit to our previous monetary policy. It is exactly the popcorn monetary policy. Assuming a dramatic uh, demerit rate, let's say 20%, uh, for the uh, illustration, illustration purpose. Therefore, on average, each one has to lose one portion of basic income when they already have five, five percent. At the same time, everyone still receives one portion of basic income. Therefore, the supply of money remains the same. This is another way to illustrate the, the popcorn monetary policy. When we have a constant population, the money supply is constant as well, as represented by the length of the horizontal axis. The existing coins at T minus two will lose their face value at T minus one, so that it can make the room for the newly issued basic income, so that the supply can remain the same. We again use the equation of exchange to analyze this monetary policy. Since we have a fixed money supply, assuming the velocity of money and the real expenditure are more or less stable, the price level will be stable as well. What happens if the size of population changes? In this example, the population doubled from T minus two to T minus one. The popcorn monetary policy will ensure that the money supply will proportionally change with the size of population. Therefore, the money supply will be doubled as well from T minus two to T minus one. Interestingly, in this situation, the existing coins have to increase their face value. And we call this the early adopter reward. Thanks for people who joined the popcorn at early stage, can have a, this reward, and therefore providing a strong incentive for people to join earlier. The popcorn monetary policy is based on the following three fundamental principles. The first principle is the principle of fixed basic income. That is, 
any participant receive a fixed amount of basic income throughout the time. This property makes the pop coin a time-based currency. That is, one pop coin can symbolically mean one hour uh, time of an average person, for example. The second principle is the principle of equality over population. That is say, any two participants receive the same amount of basic income at any time. And we name this property the equal opportunity in space. The third principle is the principle of equality over total supply. That is, we keep the ratio of the amount distributed each time to the total supply constant. And we name this property the equal opportunity in time. We proved in our full paper that uh, those three principles alone uniquely, uniquely determine the monetary policy of popcorn. Since our background is in computer science, we write the popcorn monetary policy in, in the form of an algorithm so that we can use the computer science skills to analyze and optimize it. The algorithm first takes two system parameters as input. The first one is B, that is the number of pop coins issued to each participant per meeting. And the alpha, the Demerat rate, that is. Then the algorithm takes uh, an infinite loop, distribute the basic income and ad adjusting the balance according to the Demerat rate and uh, the number of participants with the procedure indicated in the algorithm. It would be easy to translate it into a, a real computer program that can be executed by the blockchain. Above is all about the monetary policy of popcorn. However, the above process contains a very important in, in implicit, implicit assumption, that is the census. Indeed, we have to ensure that anyone can only claim one basic income at one period. And we hope that anyone is eligible to obtain the basic income, regardless of gender, age, race, or nationality. Usually, the census data is maintained by the government and generally trusted. But could we do a census without government in a decentralized way? This, this brings us to another problem which uh, we are trying to address in our life, the proof of personhood. It relies on a single requirement. Everyone who wants to obtain the basic income has to participate in a physical party. And at the party, a unique token is distributed to everyone by the organizers of the event. Later, this token enables holders to receive basic income from the blockchain and later make a transaction. During the COVID, they should uh, wear masks, of course. And this is also encouraged in the normal time because this can increase the anonymity of the participants and therefore reduce the potential risk of discrimination. However, this simple garrison only works for a small group, potentially less, less than 100 people. If we want to extend to province, country, or even global level, we have to make it uh, scalable. One solution is to federate the whole process in a multi-layer blockchain system. And this is still uh, ongoing research in our lives. To summarize the proof of personal food, uh, this requires a simple, uh, the proof of personal food relies on a simple requirement. That is the participants need to attend a physical party. Uh, the mask will help to increase the anonymity of the participants. And uh, the, the federated mechanism will increase the scalability of the personal food. So to conclude my talk, uh, so it is, I want to show you that it is possible to build a basic income system using a 
a cryptocurrency from scratch without relying on the help of government and also the existing banking system. I want to also show you uh, the, some uh, promising uh, properties of the popcorn monetary policy. Last but not least, uh, the proof of personal hood enables anonymous basic income distribution. And uh, uh, this is still uh, ongoing research and there are uh, many more challenges need to overcome. Uh, that's all my talk. Thank you very much. Great, thank you so much, Hao Chan. And without further ado, I'll ask uh, Silva and Misha um, just to get your slides up and we'll, uh, we'll have the, the last talk of the session. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for passing over. Um, do you see the slides? Uh, yeah, we can see them now. Thank you, Sylvan. Okay. Um, once we might reach the numbers, which was mixed up, the 4,000, I would love to give that community over uh, within a DAO, in a decentralized autonomous organization. That for sure is the aim, that this community at the end belongs itself and no one makes profit of it. <laughs> but that was just a bridge I did. And um, welcome to the talk, um, doing it together with Micha. We had quite a journey together and um, uh, this project we are running right now is called Ting. And it, uh, um, I quickly introduce our society uh, in German Verein. And we, um, as I said earlier, introducing myself, we were quite active in the campaign back in 2016, where it came to the vote in Switzerland, and with uh, still a huge amount of what nearly a quarter of the people who voted said yes to universal basic income. It was um, pretty uh, going around the world, because uh, it would have been the first um, first country in, the, in, in history that would have been able to uh, implement basic income. And uh, since that day, we're actually, me and Ralph, and also um, with different people like Mika joining us, coming and going, uh, we were active in the topic in Switzerland. Uh, after the, the vote, it got quite quiet in Switzerland, which is sad, but it's actually uh, beginning to change in these days. Um, oops. Looking um, 568,000 people voted, yes, um, uh, roughly 2 million who voted. And um, from there, from these times and from the campaign, making a world record in, in Geneva, also being on the on the Bahnhofstrasse and the most, most expensive street or nearly one of the most expensive streets, we had a demonstration. We gathered like 26,000 subscribers. And then we started um, asking them questions like about good life, also about would you participate in a trial? How do you want universal basic income to be implemented? How do you want it to be designed and so forth? We ended up um, making quite a big survey with Micha over on over 3000 participants. And that's the point where I hand over to Micha. Please jump in. Thank you. Well, I think when we started this research, we made one step um, back because we all know we want to have a universal basic income, but do we really know what we want to have it for? So when we started that survey or that research, that excellent research, well, I personally was really interested in my studies about uh, how a universal basic income can contribute to a good life. And together with the Verein Grundeinkommen, we asked uh, that question to what extent uh, UBI could actually contribute to a realization of a good life. So we wanted to know uh, from all these members of that community um, what they thought about that. Uh, first of all, we had uh, these sub questions that you can see on the right side. We wanted to know who are we actually in that community? Who are all these people who are interested in the UBI and still are interested even after that? No. Um, where do we want to go? Which means what do what is a good life for us? What do we see uh, under the idea of a good life? What do we expect that a UBI could contribute to this idea of a good life that we all have? That was part of that research. And then the last question was, how do we actually get there? And this is probably something that uh, is still going on with Silvan and uh, the project thing that he will present later on. Um, that research, uh, we put it in a different phase, as, as you can see with the different sub questions. Um, we had uh, the whole community, as he said, Silvan, we asked them, it was uh, around 10,000 people, but it's like 2,900 answered the first question. They answered uh, questions about their 
um, profession, age, sex, uh, family situation, and so on, to say who they actually are, uh, how much income they have, and so on. Second phase, we took um, a diverse uh, picture of this, uh, the whole community. We took a sample of 24 people and asked them a lot of questions of what they thought is a good life for them and how a UBI could contribute to that. And from this answer, to be um, created another form and asked the whole community. And you, as you can see, 2,000 people answered the, this question. Um, of uh, what uh, they would think that a UBI could, could contribute to a good life. So um, I'm going to tell you a little bit uh, something about results, about the first phase, the community. As you can see on the picture on the left side, we could see that um, uh, the, this is the, the age of the people. And we can see that uh, going down if, at the right side, the older people get, uh, we had less uh, people in the community or half, actually. So um, as you can see, this like the majority, a huge majority is between 20 and 64. So still in active working life, much more than compared uh, to the numbers in the Swiss average, uh, in the average of Switzerland. And we have uh, more people uh, with low incomes in that community. And we had fewer people with like medium high range so the, of income. And we can also see that it's a, an above uh, average number of people uh, with professions who said uh, they're still in apprenticeship, they're studying, self-employed, or looking for work. This is, might be important to see, uh, to have in mind when we look at results afterwards. Um, the second phase, we found out from all the answers people gave, we created 79 living conditions, uh, very different living conditions. Um, and from all these uh, conditions, we rank them by um, how important it is for them for a good life and how much uh, impact they thought a UBI could have for this uh, life living condition. So the, the blue line is the importance for a good life and the golden line is uh, the impact of a UBI, what people think they, it would have. So when you look at the top three of a good life on the left side is Equality and respect in a relationship was the highest voted. Freedom of speech and happiness at work, these were the highest uh, voted uh, um, conditions, people said. But you can also see that people don't think that a UBI could actually contribute a lot to certain points. For example, equality in, in a re part, uh, relationship is not really high because everything which is below that black line in the middle means that it's actually not, people don't think the UBI would contribute a lot. On the other side, you can see the things that people expect a lot from a U UBI, which is uh, first place was work-life balance, to have more time for themselves, and to have the possibility to, uh, to do another education, for example. And you can also see from the, the, the blue line, people think that this is actually also important for their life. So these are just a few samples. Then we put all this together in like uh, some head categories. And these head categories, uh, they coming were inspired from theory from, from uh, uh, Amartya Sen and Marta Nussbaum. And these uh, 11 categories uh, were also, um, uh, when you look at them, the top ranked is the education. People think education is where uh, the, the place where uh, UBI can really change a lot. It's uh, creativity and hobbies and work. These are the three main categories. When you look down at the end, it's really about living conditions, uh, social relationship, uh, social cohesion in the so society, uh, so uh, political particip participation and so on was really less. This is, brings me to the conclusion on the next page that a lot of people think that uh, UBA is actually an approach that would help them to improve opportunities for a good life. But we could also see that um, often the individual financial possibilities were in the foreground for the people and people didn't see that much the, 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 the wider uh, argument of a, of a UBI that it could really bring social stability to a, to a society or the... Um, so this is probably a discrepancy for, with the, the social arguments that often are uh, 
uh, are brought from the from the international movement of uh, universal basic income, and this probably could be a difficulty to find majorities in um, political and uh, in the society as a whole in, to find wider support for the idea of, of a universal bin, basic income if people only think about their personal interests. Or we have to find out what we can do with that uh, uh, conclusion, and we have to find it out in a project. For so the civic UBI, and if uh, the government is not doing it uh, yet, so we have to find it out on our own, and that is something that uh, Silvan is telling you now. Hey, thanks a lot. Exactly. I mean, after the vote, 2016, I heard a political guy saying on the television that um, uh, this would be off the table for roughly 10 years now. And that um, didn't just make me angry, it just made me getting up and, and, and moving towards trialing or towards doing it. And um, as, as I said, I'm, I'm rather a campaigning guy and, uh, and, and, and an initiative, a per initiative person. And um, so from that survey, we, we moved on and we programmed the microsite and we started asking people for their commitment. I mean, really like, okay, you answered the question, you think it could contribute to a good life and you think UBI is fun to do or it's nice to have, but would you actually be willing to participate and would you actually be willing to participate in the form of a civic, um, civic initiative? And would you be ready to pay in a bit, maybe for a time to get something out of it? And then, um, so we started with the running with an MVP, those who don't know, this is called Minimal Viable Product. We actually started with an Excel file, a bank account, and people to people, work to mouse stuff. No website, not much of this, just a bank account and an Excel file. And we started just finding out who would be ready to, to share a bit of money among each other. And the, that, was, that rose to a to a, a bigger project. So we also parallel started making funding for this because we really wanted to get into it. And we started building up a team and we were happy. To, we back 2019 found, found this think tank called the Centrum, which are actually really um, working on decentralized autonomous projects, ideas and, 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 and organizations. And uh, so we started, uh, yeah, early 2019, really get shit done. Um, so how does it work? Uh, any anybody in Switzerland? We, we we kept the frame, uh, or not the frame. We we closed it to be done in Switzerland. It might be possible to do it in Europe or in the whole world, but you need to you need to consider the currency differences and also the 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 the, the, the life money life money needed in different countries. So we said, okay, like everybody who's in Switzerland has a bank account can participate. And um, actually, we do the proof of, of concept or the proof of, 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 um, of personality. We do it a little bit like, do you have a bank account? And uh, then you can participate. But it's also important because once we pay out, we need a bank account to, to uh, deliver it to. OK, people come, people participate, starting with word of mouth, with a little website and said, hey, you pay in three, four, five, ten percent of your net income. It's up to you. We had a minimal amount we were uh, asking for. This was actually 100 Swiss francs. This is roughly uh, 90 dollars or something. And those the people pay it in in, in, a, in a physical bank account, which is owned by the Verein, the association. It is actually a tax free bank account. And then um, we we basically just started piling money there. And the idea is, and was, and still is, is like if every month you pay in, you decide yourself 100, 500 francs, 120, 1000 francs, whatever. And at the time comes where you, you want, or you, you, you need, or you, you are eager to do something and you change something in life, um, you can, you can, make a con you can uh, make a, a request and you describe your 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 project your idea and then um, and you can get uh, you can get uh, universal basic income out of this pot out of this bank account for up to six months uh, in in an amount of 2500 Swiss francs that's roughly the 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 minimal the minimal income range we we, we consider as universal basic in as a universal basic income minimum um, big questions always come up, like when you when you when you request for um, your basic income out of this pot, it's like how it's not unconditional. 
definitely not unconditional. It's also not universal. It's a, it's a civic trial and it's an experiment and it's a lot of fun. And um, it's you, you have to declare that this, what you want to do and you want to gain for the money is really what you want to do. Not your boss sends you or someone says, go and do this. It's really intrinsic motivated, how we call it. The second criteria is that it has to, has to bring you on further in life, like also like push you towards a good life and um, get your, get your biology uh, biography boosted. And the third and for even, even more and more important criteria is that it is also, uh, it also adds a value to society or adds a value to more than just you. With this, we really want to cut out that people just getting money for buying themselves a moped or, 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 or pimp their car or go on a cruise around the world. And then um, what actually is happening, what we see and what we really are looking for um, is that, that we have this jump, we have this, this trampoline effect. We have this effect that people are, mm -hmm. are, are, are getting, yeah, getting to move, move their ass towards a good life. Why do we do this? Um, we we want to make a proof of concept that people in Switzerland specifically are ready to to live on experiment with universal basic income and they're ready to to pay in for it and what we also really want is uh, i was a long time searching with ralph together it's like how can we produce a bit of that feeling of ubia there's so many cool ideas so many uh, nice papers around but like what we really really wanted to give it into the into the into the heart and into the the body of the people like how does ubi feel like how can we produce a bit of it and what we also see specifically in germany for instance with heart fear also in switzerland just not so tough is that social security is just going the wrong way and specifically if one treats the people bad once they're already in a bad situation for instance lose their jobs so we really want to also bring up ideas for a progressive and a proactive social security, new social security systems. And uh, yeah, in Switzerland specifically, it was important to keep the topic going. I mean, the second vote is coming. It will take us maybe five to seven years again. And guess what? I believe my promise is the Swiss will again not say yes, but maybe 30, 40 percent will. So we keep constantly keep milling that mill and uh, keep going it until we, until we, until we can, can implement it. Uh, we also want to raise questions and, of course, answer some of them. And then we are just like want to have fun and making an experiment. So we launched in the middle of that pandemic, June 2020. Um, that's the team. Uh, we made it green. We made it funky. And we just started. And the day is not 4,000. No, it's 140. Actually, it gained from yesterday, uh, from Three days ago, I made the slide. It's 144 members. So we every day we have new members coming. It's like nearly over. We're close to 14,000 US dollars monthly liquidity, meaning we spend that also every month. And this has been refilled every month because everybody pays in like 50. Actually, we have new 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 um, new subscription models, which you can also pay in 10, 20, or 50 francs because we know this hundreds is a bit tough. But so the people refill that pot, the pot, the golden pot, as we call it, every month. And every month we spend it. And so far in this year, only we already spent 38 months of basic income we paid out to people to, 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 to develop their life into a good one. And nine people um, right now are getting this UBI every month. Um, as I said, for six months in period, we would love to do it for one year. We'd love to do it for 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 all the time for 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 a lifetime but it's just not possible but we're getting it. and see next month for instance september there will be already 12 people again. so the more people come the more people can develop into a good life and what do we see so far um, on the left side, we see that people really getting into startups. They're really doing, they're getting self-employed. We even had a member, me member event where the people wanted to discuss uh, among each other. It's like, how can I get self-employed? This is really a good thing. How, let's, let's go and do it. We have people who are finishing up their education or starting an education. A person wants to, like she finished her, her education, but now she needs time between education and getting her business running. So she took this thing money. So to, to kind of train her skills, to get 
to become self-employed or people just slowed down or one guy he was like he, he he lived in a town and he thought this town is like what's happening actually in this town i want to get this town like running as a community and not everybody's just walking past each other so he started kind of experimenting with himself and with his life people are really telling us hey that they're starting to think more about meaningfulness in life more about sustainability more about they, they also they also said hey i can just just step down a bit relax and focus on just one thing for instance one girl she she now just makes her lawyer patent or uh, exam and she doesn't need to go running for a job in a bar or anything which makes her tired she took money from ting and she can just focus on what she needs to do now learning for her exam so and on the other hand what was the learning so far there was actually also coming out of this research we do still see this it's like people say oh it's great to that money, my money right now, this month, maybe goes to someone else, but it's very important also that those people have the right or have the opportunity. And that's actually what already lifts the people out of, of already gives the people a bit of that feeling of a good life is when they have the opportunity to get it once as well for themselves. So that's very important. Yeah, I'd love to give it, but I also want to have the opportunity for myself. And then we really try to, 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 to keep that balance of not controlling what do the people do. Let them be themselves, let them decide themselves what they want to really go for. Is it like your lawyer experiment or uh, is it like your lawyer ex ex um, examine or are you experimenting with your town you live in or are you getting self-employed? Who the heck am I who to decide about what's good for someone else? So we're really just controlling those those, 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 is it intrinsic, biographic, and, and, and has it an added value to society, but we're not going to judge, is this a good or a bad idea? We don't want to do this. Universal basic income doesn't do this. It, not judging the individuality. And then it was very important for us to, to kind of, um, um, uh, to kind of uh, get, get being on the bridge of like we're we're something like a bank or an insurance, but we're also running an experiment. So it's very important to not just being a fun, being the fun guys or girls, to also really going into trust because people spend, for instance, one guy he pays thousand francs per month in this uh, account. And uh, this is trustworthy. Like, are we going to just take the money and run away? No, we won't because it's 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 cool what we're doing and, and people, but people needed to understand who we are and we really try to be transparent and, and trustworthy so everybody out here um, it's ready for you um, with lessons learned you can have it you can use it in any country with any currency it is open source it's built on drupal and we build it ourselves and it's definitely scalable we're going to scale it for sure up to a few thousand members we want to really do this and um yeah come contact me you find me on the net you find the society and just google my name you can find my telephone number uh, badass i am <laughs> and um yeah happy to um happy to talk to you if you want to if you want to try this in, in your culture and someone actually in the previous session we we, we we presented it also um someone said yeah it won't be working in my country because our country is so poor i don't think so you can start with five ten bucks and you can run it and you can give it to a few people and you can actually start making a perpetuum mobile of collecting money and give it to the people for a good life Thanks for your participation. I think that's, I thought we we're going to have the question and answer directly here, but we're going to have it in plenum. So um, that was actually from the world record in Geneva, close to where Juan Can, you would um, sorry, your name um, uh, uh, is. And um, yeah, I'm finished. Great. Well, thank you so much, uh, Silva and Misha. Uh, that was great. So I'm just having a quick look on the, Hoover QA. I've got one about cryptocurrency there, but I've got a couple just to follow up with with you actually, Sylvan, on on what you've just said about franchisees. I know you made the point about, you know, some people ask asking, you know, would this work in my country if they're maybe um, a bit more poor on average there? But I guess is have you have you been getting a, a good response from that? Because I you know, my immediate reaction is you know, great. I love that you're you know, saying like, go and try this out in other countries. I think that's great. Have you got people that have uh, sort of bit bit the line already and are, are keen to go? Or are you wait, waiting for that franchisee? 
We're, no, we're still waiting for that franchisee. I mean, we haven't presented that um, idea uh, internationally. It's the, it's, the, it's the first time now in Vienna, and um, we were happy to, for this. And um, and it's still young, uh, but it's it has been approved quite a bit. So I mean, we we do have like we pull bank 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 uh, files and read them in. And, and uh, it's pretty, things are pretty automated, even to a CRM system. So we, 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 made, our, we made our learnings and we made our step. It's not, it, it really you, it needs a few people to run it, but, but you, could, you could start, you could trial and uh, uh, have, have no, had no response yet, but, uh, but we're just shouting it out right now. Yeah, great. And like you said, you're in the perfect place to shout out. So um, I'd also say, you know, obviously anyone who's an attendee, please get in touch about that. And um, if you guys want to post that somewhere on the community boards on Hoover as well, just to keep getting that um, idea out there, you know, I'd suggest you definitely do that as well. Um, I guess a quick follow up is you mentioned about um, the one of the politicians said, oh, you know, UBI, it's gone for 10 years. Clearly it's not some of, some of the work you're doing and you're saying, well, it might be in five years time from now. That'd be, I guess, 10 years since the referendum. Is that right? It was in 2016. Um, you said, you know, it might not be a yes, but it's, it's nudging up. I guess following from that was, are you seeing some kind of consistent support as well as a kind of on a community basis from political parties that were in favor at the time. Is that basis of support still kind of there and active with you? And is that something that, you know, they're keen to kind of build build that uh, movement on the ground? You know, it's actually really interesting. Like we really, I, I don't want to be proud on that, but we really kicked the, the debate in nationally, uh, um, uh, worldwide. With with that, that was for some people it was shocking. Well, this country could have voted yes, and then and then and everybody, of course, asked why are the Swiss people so damn stupid to say no on this? But you know, Swiss people also say no on six weeks holidays. They said no on on our social security system. It took three times a vote until people said, yeah, let's have a vote uh, a security system, and now nobody can touch it anymore. But the the thing is that actually it was it got it things got moved through this internationally i think big times but it was it got very much quiet in switzerland we were we from the campaign were also a little bit exhausted i think and um, those 20 25 people who really intensively worked on it we had good fun but we were a bit exhausted maybe the, the, the topic was a little bit through and not and not um sad about it didn't go through because the the thing is right now and, and we've been on the street again for and um, for a scientific um trial we're going to go through a vote in zurich and, um, and you don't need to describe universal basic income on the street anymore. Everybody knows about it, not in the details. And what actually is really, really good in, in, in that too, and then I come to your, 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 uh, your original question about the politicians and the parties, uh, is that the people, we are ready now to talk about how do we want to finance it? Can we finance it? With which tax? Is it income tax? Is it negative income tax? Is it, is it VAT? Is it uh, whatever? People are already ready to talk about financing universal basic income, which is actually a huge step. And with the first shot going through and asking the Swiss people, hey, do you want it or not? It was just set as a topic and the debate was started. But actually what we do see still from the big political parties, they're not going, they're not running on it. But I think it's just still too many questions are open, too less answers are there. And that's where we actually also see, but what we see is a, a huge openness also on big parties. I'm here, a liberal FDP parties, for instance, the, the green specifically, but also the left ones. And not only the left ones, also those who are playing in the middle is like for scientific trials, for instance, or trialing, testing, getting answers, um, and not only debates, really like getting into trialing. And for this, they're open. And that's what we're actually doing in, a, in, in Zurich. We're, we're, we're having a vote on this maybe next year or in two years. Um, and they're uh, really, really keen to see how that's, how, how that's going. Great, great. Well, thank you very much. I am... Um... I can empathize um, with you on the terms of being exhausted from the debate, even though you know, you're know you on the losing side, you want the, the energy and the steam to keep going um, without giving away my own uh, political preferences, I suppose. We had the independence debate here in Scotland in 2014, and I'll just say I was similarly exhausted after that. Um, okay, so 
uh, just having a look at the Hoover chat. So we've got a question in there from uh, Dennis Ferangi. Thank you, Dennis. Um, and the question is, what stops me from going to lots of POP parties and gaining lots of tokens for lots of accounts? And then also what backs the value of the cryptocurrency if we bypass uh, governments? So I'll pass it over to Houtin and Elisa, you know, anyone who has a perspective on that, uh, please, uh, please go for it. Thank you. Um, maybe I can first say something. So the uh, proof of personal food party. Uh, so basically there are, could be many proof of personal food party, but the one thing need to be guaranteed is that uh, those proof of personal food party need to held in the same time. So that one person can only go uh, one party to obtain the token. That's a security uh, assumption of, of this party, yeah. Uh, the second question is about uh, the uh, how to guarantee the value of the of the popcorn. I think, I think as a as a Bitcoin, there is no guarantee. So basically, I, I hope people uh, support this uh, this idea, and also just like Bitcoin, after ten years, people realize the value of Bitcoin, and also hope uh, and and I hope that uh, the people can realize the value of popcorn as well. Uh, so so it will gain some value. Uh, 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 one more thing is uh, because we, we also have a, a, a fixed monetary policy like the Bitcoin, so there is a guarantee not like find money that uh, the government can print money as they want. We cannot like Bitcoin. So this will give an additional incentive for people to, to accept uh, the value of popcorn. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Ha-Chan. Aliza? I can also comment on the what what gives the currency value. So like my I guess my talk was kind of sidestepping that. Like the assumption I was making is that we already kind of figured that out. We have a pool of cash to distribute. But I have written about this before, and this is very interesting. There are um, projects that are there. There are many, maybe many is an exaggeration, but there are several projects that are um, specifically like basic income cryptocurrencies. And I, I, I have an article that I wrote actually for the for the um, the India basic income conference, um, all about um, like a roadmap to universal basic income. Um, is that, yeah. Okay. And yeah, I can share that with wh whoever asked that question who's interested in like different ideas for how to um, how to do a government independent um, like alternative currency um, specifically for the idea of basic income. In addition to that, you could also do um, local currencies that, that focus on basic income. Um, and, and you could also do um, like a mutual credit system, which in my opinion, has a lot of the same, a lot of similarities. And if you collateralize the credit, then it could be like essentially the same thing, depending on how you pull that off. Um, sorry if I'm talking very fast. I have uh, something to go to in a few minutes. So, um, yeah, I think I think that was all I had to say on the topic. Do you mind if I if I ask a question? No, please go for it. Um, I was wondering. Um, so Popcoin looked really similar, at least with the monetary policy, to um, June or the the um, Juniper, the French cryptocurrency basic income project. And I was wondering um, if there was uh, there was a connection between the the two. Uh, so when we designed the Popcoin, we didn't wear off that work. Um, uh, yeah, we didn't wear off that work. So. In the end, we in this out is very similar monetary policy. The difference is that uh, I think they adopt the inflationary approach, and uh, we do not. We hope to uh, keep the uh, the supply uh, constant when we have a constant population. So this will help uh, popcorn to establish idea of time based currency. So this is uh, something they don't have. I would actually, I would actually say not to occupy all the time, the time, but I would say that they're the same thing because it, while it is inflationary, it's also totally created through basic income. So mathematically, it's the same thing as a dumb range. Yeah, mathematically, I, I would say it's very similar. Yeah. Yeah, identical. <laughs> I'll let anyway, you guys. That's really cool. I'll let you guys <laughs> rough, rough that one out. Not, but I will do private it. chat if you want. Oh, okay. <laughs> No, no, I'm just kidding. Please, please go for it. Please respond. 
but I do want to re-emphasize the, the importance of having a, a stable uh, monetary uh, money supply. So this makes the time-based currency possible. Well, the inflation approach will not. Basically, we can, because we all access to, uh, let's say, uh, 25, uh, 24 hours a day. So instead of we evaluate the goods, we can, uh, we can transact our time. For example, uh, maybe uh, uh, one hour baby sitting time is, uh, is, uh, is also equals to like 15 minutes doctor time. So this is a fundamental stable uh, uh, metric because we all have the same. And this can be the fundamental source uh, for, for why we have the, the basic income in the first place, yeah. Can I say something? Oh, of I, so I think that's so interesting, but I would say that time is stable relative to time. And so my, like, I don't think there's any way you can, you know, you can actually say that the, the unit would be relative, you know, would be stable relative to a basket of goods. And um, I don't think that there's anything necessarily wrong with having an inflationary money supply because you can have in inflating goods, you know, like you could have more and more goods. And, and so it's, it's a kind of an open question to me. How do you have, a, how do you create a value system that actually maps onto the real, um, productive capacity and the real availability of resources, um, because that fluctuates. That that is not stable. Um, time may be stable, but that the things we we purchase with, you know, is it, not necessarily stable. And that's why I, I got interested in mutual credit, which um, you know goes along with this philosophy of um, money can be created and destroyed as needed, um, rather than having some sort of arbitrary system that creates you know, X amount of units of value just for, you know, detached from the reality of the goods and services that exist in the economy. And I have, yeah, I have lots more to say on that too. I think that's a very yeah. interesting question. Yeah, I think there are many arguments supporting uh, inflation policy and also some people supporting um, like uh, make the price stable. Uh, but I think, uh, I think uh, for, for the productivity part, this is a, a really, uh, hard to control. For example, nobody uh, realized we have a COVID that will uh, reduce the GDP uh, so greatly uh, last year. So, uh, so, so for the production part, yes, we, we, we do not have the uh, very good tool to really control it. But on the other hand, our time is, is really a, a stable measurement because as long as we have a, a as long as uh, we, we, we do not uh, uh, travel at light speed, we all access to the same metrics. And if we transfer the good-based uh, good based, uh, economy to a, to a human-centric economy, which is based on evaluating the time, then we will have a, a, a constant uh, available time if our population are more or less stable. So I think uh, this is uh, something, the next step we are going to uh, promote, that is uh, really a time-based uh, economy, uh, economy, yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Sylvan, I know you've got your hand up. I saw you popped a, a question into the chat, so I'll, I'll let you I'll let you say it as our, our final question of the session. Thanks. I speak it out. Hey, thanks. It was very interesting, you two guys. Um, my question is, what I is there any other idea or any other plan how to implement universal basic income on a crypto then in, rather than like starting with really small amounts and spreading it or raising it over time until it's existency saving because that is I think it's a good idea, but me being not on a patient person, I'm, I'm, I, I don't, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I don't think this will, this this takes ages or or like how can we how can we it's great you know with DAO and with cryptocurrencies and with blockchain we have really the opportunity to implement it universally and that is that is so so great 
technology around to do it but if it's like if it's if we're if we're running around on that it's just five dollars or once ten dollars or fifteen dollars a month per person on the world we're not we're not getting there in time i'm scared and like what's what is the idea of how how can we get it be done and fast <laughs> uh so so that's both to answer yeah, Hao Chan, uh, Elise just had to leave me, so I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll leave this one to you. Thank you. Oh, uh, of course, that's a very good question, an important question. Um, uh, for, uh, I think, uh, I think for Popcoin, uh, it's something not relied on the existing money. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's like Bitcoin, it's independent currency from, from zero, uh, from, from, from the ground, from the zero. So the value will really depend on people think about it and how people transact and and perhaps the, the cloth currency transaction so this is a similar like bitcoin we are uh, not uh, in controlling the value unfortunately so this will need uh, uh, perhaps uh, uh, you, you to promote the basic income to let people to know more so that uh, it will create value from the thing air unfortunately this i cannot do anything uh, on the other hand i think uh, uh, we do have some plan to do some uh, small experiment uh, for example, in a small college, uh, uh, a small community, or we are planning to do a, a so-called EPFL coin at my uh, university, so that uh, students uh, in between can can exchange uh, their time. Um, and I think this uh, could be a starting point uh, for 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 developing the idea of popcorn. Uh, but uh, for for the fast, um, unfortunately. Uh, uh, this could be uh, very difficult. I don't think uh, we, we are going to say it uh, very soon. Great. Well, thank you, Hao Chan. Um, I love that discussion. I wish we could keep going, but unfortunately, we've run to time. So we're at uh, 4 50 BST just now. So all that's left to say is um, thanks again to Elisa, Hao Chan, Sylvan, and Misha as well for your time, your presentations. They're absolutely brilliant. Um, for you guys as speakers and for the attendees, if you want to keep the um, conversation going, you can create a group chat on Whova. You can post in the, this session as well on Whova to keep the chat going. Or you can, of course, uh, privately message each other if you want to as well. Um, otherwise, just want to, again, thank you all for coming along. Uh, we hope you enjoy the rest of the BN Congress. Uh, goodbye, good night, good morning, whatever time it is where you are. But we'll see you soon. Thanks, everyone. Bye.